Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And it's time for another versatile episode of Fuzz Fiddle with Flax. Today we're checking out an octave fuzz. For those of you who aren't familiar, octave fuzz produces an octave up effect, which seems like a weird choice for violin, but if you know me and you've watched my previous episodes, you know that this pedal changed the game for me. The Fender Blender. This is an original 1968 unit and it makes some amazing sounds. If you haven't watched that video, you should go back and watch it. I'll link to that. Um, you should see a card appearing somewhere on screen in one of these corners shortly. Go watch that and then come back. Ever since I found that pedal, I've been looking for a suitable octave up alternative. Something that's modern, that would fit on the pedal board, maybe a smaller enclosure would be good, perhaps something with top mounted jacks, that would allow me to have that octave up gated sound and get me to that kind of texture and timbre without having to risk this ancient giant pedal being on my traveling setup. One of the pedals that caught my attention was made by a company called Walrus Audio. So today we are taking a look at the Kangra. Ooh. Beautiful artwork on this thing. There are a bunch of knobs and a bunch of dials and you can see it's top mounted there's also an expression pedal input, so we're gonna take a look at what that does later. Let's plug it in and see how it sounds. Okay, we've got the fuzz plugged in. Let's talk about signal chain. I've got my violin with a Schertler Stat V pickup going directly into the Kangra, going into the rest of my rig. I'm using the Chase Bliss Benson preamp Mark II for an always on clean sound, going into the crazy tube circuits, golden ratio compressor, a little tiny teeny bit of reverb from the Chase Bliss CXM 1978. Ooh, video on that coming soon, hopefully. That's going into my GFI system, Cabsus, into the interface. Let me mute the room mics and you can hear just the sound of the pickup through this signal. Yeah, that's a nice gnarly spitty octave fuzz sound. Let's tweak some of the controls. So a quick perusal of the manual <laughs> will tell us. Volume controls the overall volume. Okay, duh. Mid switch, this toggle changes the mid range contour of the fuzz circuit from heavily scooped to a flatter mid response. As you can see, that's the top one and it's currently on the flatter response. Let's hear what it sounds like scooped. So not a huge difference for an instrument that doesn't have many mids. <laughs> Let's try it with the bow and see if it's more pronounced. I'm gonna put it back to the full response and move on to the next toggle, which is the MV switch. The MV toggle switch lets you choose between a more modern feel left and a more vintage feeling fuzz right. 
the modern position is smooth and more forgiving sound with longer, tighter sustain. The vintage position feels starved and offers chunky breakup for a more coarse, sustaining grit. Well, that's where we've been. We've been in the vintage position because, again, I'm trying to get a vintage sound. But for giggles, let's have a listen to the modern alternative. <laughs> All right, let's hear it now with that mid switch back and forth in this modern setting. Let's see if that makes a difference. Kind of cool. I think maybe actually that's the sweet spot for me. <laughs> I like the way that when you play two notes, a double stop, it confuses the octave setting, right? When I play just one note, you can hear I've got the mic on now, so you can hear which note I'm playing. Here, I'll turn off the that D on my A string. Can you hear how it's playing the uh, way up there also? I feel like it does a better job of making the octave more prominent in this configuration. So we'll leave it there for now. Pretty good all round sounding octave fuzz. So let's listen to the filter side of the pedal without the fuzz for a moment. And that is a really versatile thing that the Kangra does. You can use the fuzz or the filter or both. Let's listen to the filter. Funky. The frequency knob, as you can see, is set all the way down, which means that it's closed, and the only thing that opens the filter is my playing. So when I pluck or strum hard, it gives it a sort of chunky wow sound as it opens, and then as the uh, volume of my pluck fades away, it then closes up. This is sometimes called an envelope follower or an auto wah, because it kind of does a wah wah thing, but automatically. feels like I'm in a 70s movie. <laughs> now let's see, how does that envelope follower work with a bow? Usually, this is designed for guitar and it has a 
strong attack, and then the envelope follower behaves in a predictable taper off way. But a bow can completely change the envelope. Let's try some different bowing techniques and see how the filter responds. So as you can hear, there's a great benefit to doing this with short percussive strokes, either off the string spiccato or hooked bows, anything that has a short burst of attack, that's going to make more use out of that envelope filter. But of course, you can set it differently. Check this out. Now I've turned off the envelope follower, which basically parks the filter in one spot. Now I can adjust manually the frequency and just find a sweet spot. Let's find a sweet spot. Not as dynamic, but it's a pretty interesting sound. I set it still with a lot of resonance, so there's a really high upper frequency that's popping out now. Let's turn the fuzz back on and then sweep through those sweet spots to find an interesting and unique fuzz tone. Right away it sounds like I've run the fuzz through like a telephone filter. Like it's just, it's cutting out some of the top and the bottom end maybe. I'm not sure if it's a bandpass filter. It feels like a bandpass filter. It's either a low pass, a high pass, or a bandpass. And my hunch is bandpass. I could probably read the manual, but can you hear that it's losing some of the sound on either the low and high end? Am I going crazy? Okay, that's a cool sound. If I'm plucking a single note and turning through the filter manually, what a neat sound. If only there were a way that I could do that hands-free. Oh wait, there is. You can use the expression pedal input on the side. Okay, I've got a Dunlop Volume X Mini plugged into the expression port with the TRS cable, and let's sweep through some frequencies, shall we? That is too much fun. But of course, you can use the filter without the fuzz too. Let's do that same sweeping without using the fuzz. So it's just a nice sweep. And now to get that sustain and bite, I'm going to use my bow. <laughs> So now it's behaving basically just like a regular wah-wah pedal. Almost. It's really filtering almost all the sound out when you close the expression or turn the knob all the way down. But of course, you can change the shape and character of this and make it your own custom wah pedal by changing the resonance amount. Bring that down a little bit to make it a little bit subtler for this application. So now with the filter set the way it is, a little bit lower resonance, it becomes just sort of a nice 
sort of roll off as opposed to an obvious quacky pronounced peak. That's kind of useful too. I think it's most interesting to crank the resonance and give yourself the most sweep and the most obvious sweep uh, with that resonance dialed. But just for giggles, let's turn the fuzz back on. Maybe that will give us enough spiky flavor that the, a little lower resonance is a nice balance. That's pretty cool. I actually really like that setting because now with the filter all the way open, it's a harsh, bitey, aggressive fuzz sound. And then if I roll the, the expression pedal back a little bit, it's a more subtle, slightly darker, maybe more of a rhythm tone. So I can sort of quickly go between two sounds. Check it out. So that's the Kangra. It's a really fun, really versatile pedal, and I hope you'll check it out. Check out the folks at Walrus. Disclosure, they did give me a discount on this pedal. I am an endorsed Walrus artist, so I did not get this for full price. So even though I did pay a little less for it, I still paid to buy it because I thought it was cool. So I hope you'll check it out. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll know when the next episode comes up as well as all my other videos. If you really like this and you would like to support me personally and become part of my exclusive Patreon community, you can do so by visiting patreon.com slash robflax. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.